we have been dealing with the revelation of Jesus Christ, Christ revealed in his church. Truthfully, that's what we deal with every week. We may have a different subject, but our hearts are longing to see him. That's the desire of our hearts. And we will most likely be in this sharing for some time. And I know some of the scriptures have been familiar with the last sharing I've done, the I am's of Jesus, but that's okay. And I'm going to go back over some familiar scripture with you today. And from there, we're most likely going to move on. But just to catch your hearts and minds back up to the thought of his appearing in you, not just his appearing, but his appearing in you, in Colossians 3, Colossians 3, you can turn there, the last three weeks we've been looking at Christ the power and Christ the wisdom of God, and now we're looking at the appearing of him in us, which is his power, his wisdom, his glory, his person, Christ revealed in his church. Well, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, it says, If then you were raised together with Christ, seek those things that are above, for Christ is seated on the right hand of God, Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are upon the earth, for ye died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall be manifested, then shall you also with him be manifested in glory. All right. I've mentioned this a number of times. Colossians chapter 1 tells us Christ in you is the hope of glory. So God's glory come into our hearts in a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. So now here in chapter 3, Apostle Paul, there's so much here we could say, if we're raised with Christ, or since we're raised with Christ, we are seeking that of Christ. We are seeking that of his authority, of the right hand of God, of his power. Our minds are on that of him and not on the earth. Now, that's what Paul tells us to do, set our hearts, set our minds, on him, for you died, and we've dealt with that so many times, that we're dead to the old man, we're dead to sin, we're dead to the law. All that is true in him. And our life is here with Christ and God. Now, now this is the part I want us to get a hold of. Christ, who is our life. Christ who is our life. We have no life but him. See, since we've been raised with him, he's our life. He's our life. The life of the resurrection is Christ. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. We as Christians, including myself, will make comments sometimes, what's wrong with my life? Is something wrong with my life? And we're looking at, you know, there may be some external thing creating pressures or not going our way, and we'll begin to question, well, is there something wrong with my life? Am I living right? before God, 
Well, <laughs> Paul says Christ is your life. Let that sink in. Christ, your life. Let that sink in. So our life is always good because he's our life. Our life is always right because he's our life. I want, I want to ask you a question. Is there a law against Christ? No. Is there any missing of the mark in Christ? No. Is there any sin in Christ? No. Unrighteousness? No. Unholiness? No. You can go on and on. There is nothing that's against the will and purpose of God that's in Christ. Nothing. It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So all fullness of God, all fullness of purpose, all fullness of thought dwells in him. Let us get a hold of that. Now, he that has all fullness, that is all righteousness, that is all sanctification, that is all holiness, is my life. So, so let us get rid of this thought that there may be something wrong with our life. I was going to say lives, but we have life, singular, because he's the life of the body, which is the church. So as we get a hold of this, he is our life. And when he appears, the King James says. We appear with him in glory when he appears. And I've said this many times. I'm not looking at an external appearing here, but I'm looking at an internal appearing. appearing. Your life is in you. Your life is in you. So when your life appears, you appear with him in glory. This word appear or manifested, Fenero, 5319 in the Strongs, illuminate, make manifest, visible, make plain, to become apparent, graspable to render apparent. So, so we could say when he appears, it's rendered apparent in us. And now I want to say this to you, Jesus appearing in you, Christ appearing in you is not a one-time event. It's an ongoing reality of him that is in us. So when he appears in righteousness, then we appear in righteousness with him. Okay? In other words, righteousness at that moment is rendered apparent in our heart. And that's made real, or he's made real, as righteousness to you and I. 
he's rendered apparent of what he is. Now, another scripture that goes along with this is 1 John 3. John writes, 1 John 3, 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God, and such we are. For this cause the world knoweth us not, because it knew not him. Beloved, now are we children of God, and is not yet made manifest what we shall be. Now, this is the same word. We know that if he shall be manifested, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every one that hath this hope set on him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So God bestowed upon us that we would be called children of God. That's through new birth, being born of his seed, born of his kind, born of God. You can go on and on. And for this cause, the world knows us not because the world thinks we're just like them except with some religious behavior. That's what a lot of people that even profess Christianity believe is that it's just a religious behavior. One, ha one believes this way, one believes that way, but that's not the reality in Christ. Through the work of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection, through believing on him, through receiving the Lord, through Christ coming into our hearts, we are born from above, and we are children of the Most High God. Okay? So everyone born again is a child of God. They're God's kind because Christ is in them. Okay, so they belong to him, and he belongs to us, but he's the head. All right, now, and John says, now we are children of God. Okay, now here's how we know purpose of being a child of God. Is, is what John's saying here. I want you to really follow this because a lot of people look at purpose as someday after a while we'll come to the purpose of God or over there we'll come to the purpose of God. We'll understand it better by and by, but I want you to really follow this. We know that if he shall be manifested, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Okay. When he is rendered apparent in us as he is, we are rendered apparent in him as he is. Why is that? He's our life. <laughs> so when he's manifested or rendered apparent, we are rendered apparent in him. That's correct. That's correct. He's our life. So when he's rendered apparent as the righteousness of God, we are rendered apparent in the righteousness of God in him. Just like Paul says, he has made unto us righteousness. So now we see purpose. We see purpose when we see him. Not when we understand it better by and by, 
But when the Spirit of God shows us the Lord Jesus, you and I see purpose. And that's how we're rendered apparent in the Lord or manifest in the Lord by seeing him. Why is that? Why is that? I just want you to follow me in this. 2 Corinthians 3. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. Having therefore such a hope, we use great boldness of speech and not as Moses who put a veil upon his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look on the end of that which was passing away, but their minds were hardened. For unto this very day at the reading of the old covenant, the same veil remains, it not being revealed to them that it is done away in Christ. But unto this day, whensoever Moses is read, a veil lies upon the heart. But whenever it shall turn to the Lord, that's the heart, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are transformed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord, or by, even as from the Lord, the Spirit. So we're transformed by the Lord. I can't transform myself. I can't make myself better. Get a hold of this. Christ our life appears. We'll be like him. We'll see him as he is. This is the same thing. Beholding as in a mirror. The glory of the Lord. Here's where we're transformed. We shall see him and we shall be like him metamorphosis, to be transformed into the image of him that is seen. So the transforming power to our souls is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the transforming power to our soul. I can't be transformed, but by the seeing of him. See, it is the seeing of him that we come to understand his work. We come to understand that through his work, we're made righteous. If I don't see his work, if I don't see him by the Spirit of God, if I don't see the work he's done by the Spirit of God, how that his work was fully accepted of God, how that his work fully completed the work of God. If I don't see that, I don't know how I made the righteousness of God in Christ. I can read it in the Bible, but I know it as I see him that is the righteous one. That's what's changing my heart, my soul is seeing the righteous one. Seeing the one that always pleases the Father. Seeing the one who is perfect and complete. Seeing the one that all fullness dwells. Seeing the one that there is no sin. See, it's the cleansing of our hearts 
as we see him. He's our change. See, I'm telling you, you can't work yourself righteous. That's what most Christians or many Christians try to do. They try to work themselves righteous, and it's impossible. He is made unto us right standing with God. We are declared to be righteous by him. And our soul aches and groans for the reality of this, for the expression of this. Maybe the reality is the wrong word, but for the expression of this in our hearts. Our soul aches inside of us. And how this comes about is by the seeing of him. Now, look down at Hebrews 9. We looked at this for several weeks. Verse 24, for Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor was it that he would offer himself often as the high priest enters the holy place year by year with the blood that is not his own. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And inasmuch as it's appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment, so Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await him or those that look for him will he appear okay notice this he appears in the presence of god for us okay so our standing with god is christ jesus the lord that's our standing with God, is Jesus Christ the Lord. It's pretty good standing. It's pretty good life. Okay? You could even consider it this way, that Jesus died, was buried, raised from the dead, and entered into glory himself. Now, that was without you and I at that point. He came out of God. He was God, came into the earth, died the death of the cross, was buried, put in a tomb, raised out from the dead, ascended, was glorified, seated, in the right hand of God. Okay? So he did that work himself. Just want you to consider this for a moment. Now he come to us in the new birth. I believe that's even, you could say, John 14, 3, where Jesus said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. So where we are is in this work. So he appears in the presence of God for us. So his appearing in the presence of God is mine and your completion, or yours and my completion. Okay? So he appears for us. So so it's not our efforts appearing here. He appears for us. 
and we appear in him. So when he's rendered apparent in us, that's made real. We're rendered apparent in that work. Okay? In his work of righteousness, in his work of glory, in his work of power, strength, might, dominion. Any, any one of these attributes of him or characteristics of him, right? So he's the one. And we are complete in him. Now, it's pointed unto man to die, verse 27. And after this comes judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, so Christ took the judgment for those that received him. He took our appointment of death. So Christ was offered to bear the sins of many, and he appears the second time without sin to salvation. Now that's to you and I. So, so it's appointed men to die, and after this, the judgment. So our judgment is Christ bore our sins, and he appears in us unto salvation. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then we shall appear with him. So he appears in us unto salvation. Yes. And we've dealt with the word salvation in the past. Moving from one state of being to another. Amen? Amen. Salvation being delivered from one place and brought into another. Israel's salvation wasn't that they came out of Egypt. That was part of it. But their salvation was God brought them to himself. And see, our salvation is not that we just come out of sin. But Jesus said, I will come and bring you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also and he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, you're going to know that. At that day, you're going to know I am in my Father, you're in me, and I'm in you. Now, that's what's rendered apparent to us. That's what's made manifest. That's what appears. Christ, our life. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He appears in us in fullness, in completion, in the work he's done. So we look to him as our judgment. He bore my sins. So I'm not facing the judgment of sin because Jesus bore my sins. And I'm not facing the judgment of death. Because he's my life. I died with him to the old creation. Now he's my life. And his life is eternal. So my life's eternal. Because he's my life. Uh, yes. See, he destroyed him that had the power of death, that is the devil. He rendered him powerless here. He has no power over you or me. Because Christ is our life. He has all power and authority in heaven and earth. And see, as we see this divine truth by the Spirit of God, it is realized in our hearts. It is made manifest, rendered apparent. We come to know it. We see it. We come to spiritual sight, spiritual understanding, comprehension of what he's done. 
because we see him as he is. We see him glorified. We see him in the fullness, having all authority. Amen. A lot of Christians need to see him with the authority and not the enemy. Now, that word see says often is has a metaphorical meaning, which means to see with the mind, to spiritually see, perceive the inward spiritual perception. That's back in 1 John 3, where we were earlier. So we see him as he is. <laughs> and we are transformed. Renewed in the mind to what he's done. That, that to me, honey, you're talking about great salvation. If a group of believers were renewed, and that's what he's done, that they've come to see what he's done, and they're not living out of what they've done, or they've, they're not living out of the despair of the enemy, but they're coming to live out of what he's done. They're dwelling in the work of Jesus Christ. They've entered into his rest, and their works are past. Whew. Man, that's salvation. So the enemy has no hold, no strength, no power, no word over us. Because Jesus paid it all. Jesus bore my sorrows. Jesus bore in his flesh my iniquities. Now, we can see that when we look upon him, when we look upon ourselves and and we and we think the gospel's just behavior modification. We get real what's the word? I won't say depressed, but that's not the right word. We we get real anxious because we see that I don't have the ability to be righteous. I don't have the ability in myself to fulfill God's command. But thanks be unto God. Christ has fulfilled the commands. He that knew no sin became sin for us that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. So what we're looking at is him. By the Spirit of God, we're looking at this glorious work, this three-day journey of the cross. And we're praising God for it, for the preaching of the cross is the wisdom and the power of God to us who are saved. Christ, the wisdom. Christ, the thought of God. Christ, the mind of God. Christ, the power of God. So all that, get, get a hold of that, all that to your soul. God's thought to you before the world was is Jesus Christ. God's power to take you out of the old man and fill you with his life is Jesus Christ. He is. Righteousness, sanctification, redemption, holiness. He has made this to you and I, folks. What a glorious salvation we have 
May he be seen and may he be declared from our hearts. Bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see you again, Lord willing, next week. God bless.